I would like to draw your attention to some coming events. The Christmas production will be the Pirates of Penzance, and Mr. Fanshawe would like to hear from all aspiring pirates, young ladies, <laughs> scene shifters, and scene painters without delay. Mr. Molyneux is preparing the program for the junior and senior concerts, and Mr. Griffiths is taking entries for the Seven Aside Knockout Tournament. It will not be easy for us to surpass our magnificent efforts of last year, but I am sure that we will all surprise ourselves again. Thank you. School. Two negatives in English destroy one another. All our equivalents were the fifth. As one might say, nor were they unacquainted with real Shopkeeper caught him red-handed. I um, took the liberty of compensating him and smoothing him down. I don't think he really wanted to make trouble. It's the boy I'm concerned about. Crispy never struck me as being the criminal type. Oh, well, we couldn't get a word of explanation out of him. Would you like me to talk to him? Oh, no, DJ. I'll keep an eye on him. I just felt you ought to know. to you, Mrs. Pallet Jones. You are looking remarkably well. Chris, you promised to call me Chris. Oh, my apologies. I do try, I assure you. I think it must be the awe I experience before my headmaster that prevents me. You must try to be patient. David, the Gilbert and Sullivan. I was wondering, could I help? Oh, yes, of course, Chris. I didn't like to ask. There's masses of work to be done with the costumes and makeup. Costumes and makeup, David, you know I can hardly sew on a button. Couldn't I help with the production or the stage management? Uh, well, I'm afraid that's a bit politically difficult. You see, um, old Algie Harris likes to be asked over to do that, and the brunt of the work falls on to Molyneux. And between them both, they've become a bit possessive about it. Oh. Well, it was, it was just a passing fancy. I could do them a party for the first night. Yes, yeah, splendid. Good idea. Fine. Well, I won't keep you then. I've got some shopping in the village. Oh, uh, Chris. Yes? Uh, I was going to ask if I might call round for a chat one morning. A little problem I think you might be able to help me with. Yes, of course. I'm free tomorrow at 11. Fine. I'll look forward to it. Thank you. That was kind of you, Howarth. Kind of me? Yes, I... I think she did feel a bit cut off from everything at first. Naturally enough, I suppose. But she's through all that now. And expecting the baby, well, that's... Well, it's given her a kind of focus that she didn't have before. <laughs> Banfield's a strange place. It seems to help people get things into perspective. David, I hope you've known me too long to take offence. At what? Bamfield worked wonders for you when you first came here and after Beth's accident, but as a patent remedy, it's not universally effective. Difficult sometimes for those of us who love the place to admit to ourselves that just a few of the boys, and dare I say it, the masters, see their years here as an exercise in the endurance of misery. Hmm? I hope you're not implying that Chris feels that way. Oh, no, no. Because if you are, I'm, I'm sure it's very kindly meant, but you're completely wrong. Oh, she's fitted in more completely than I could have thought possible. Well, you can see for yourself how happy she is. Anyway, um, uh, how are you? Oh, uh, as well as can be expected. The quacks profess themselves satisfied. But, um... 
I should advise you not to include me in any long-term plans. That's in strict confidence, of course. Oh, don't make faces at me, man. I'm perfectly content with my lot. Just... And if you could possibly avoid any expression of sympathy, I should be inordinately grateful. Yes, of course. Thank you. Well, young Bennington will be waiting to read his latest essay to me. I do hope the dear chap pulls off his Cambridge scholarship this term. I don't think I could stand many more of his brilliant insights. Much more comfortable not understanding what makes people tick when you're as old as I am. Crispin, what are you doing here? Private study period, sir. I trust you haven't been ostracized. Your fellow savages in Lower Four haven't sent you to Coventry. Hmm? No. Good. Well, solitude is greatly underrated, I agree. I too find my fellow human beings very hard to bear at times. So. Crispin, that sweet shop business, it's all over now. Put it at the back of your mind. I know it won't happen again, and you can rely on me to forget it. One good thing about old codgers like me, we have very bad memories. You follow? Yes, sir. And um, if there's anything bothering you, Come and talk to me about it. I may not be able to solve your problems, but I'll listen. And strangely enough, that often seems to help. And don't feel you'll be a nuisance. The housemaster's miserable pittance is paid for just such things as that. Promise? Yes, sir. Good. Good. Things will get better, Crispin. I know it's hard to believe now, but they will. Well. Yes. I end up doing none of them. Uh, there you are. How's that? Gin at 11 in the morning? Mrs. Powlett Jones, what sort of a man do you take me for? Well, somehow not a coffee and fairy cakes man. <laughs> anyway, I've had so many coffee parties and tea parties that I thought it was time for a change. I see you're not joining me. Unfortunately, no. My interesting condition, you know. You heard about what happened last night? Yes, I did. You don't think he tried... He was unconscious when they dragged him out of the coke hole. If he hadn't been found when he was, he might be dead now. Oh, everybody thought, and I encouraged them to think that he'd gone down there to get away from people and hadn't been aware of the danger. Solemn warnings all round, everything settled. But you don't really think so? 
I'm not suggesting it was a suicide plan, not exactly, but it's possible that he went down there feeling no particular need to stay alive. Would you go and speak to him? I don't know what I could do. Well, maybe nothing, but at least you start with an advantage over me. He doesn't see you as a crusty old martinet with a hacking cough and a reputation for short temper and sarcasm. Look, I don't know anything about schoolboys, but isn't it just possible that he's a bit more sensitive than most? It might take him longer to shake it off, the, the feeling that people think he's a thief. I'm afraid it goes deeper than that. I think the stealing is a symptom, not the cause. God knows why his life's so desperately unhappy. There hasn't been any family tragedy. Parents separated. Neither of them seems to have much time for him, but then you could say that about quite a few of the boys here who seem to bear up well enough. Uh, it might be that he simply hasn't anything he feels he can look forward to. And he's surrounded by well-meaning people who, who keep telling him how lucky he is. He's young, he's healthy, he's got everything to look forward to. That just makes things worse. Yes, I will go and see him, of course. Though God knows what I'll say to him. Thank you. you see, I think I know how he feels. I don't know the way out of it. Oh, dear, I must be off. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the gin. Now I fear I must go and breathe it over the lower fifth remove. Good morning, Mr. Fowler Jones. What can we do for you? I've come to see Crispin, if it's all right. How is he? Oh, Crispin's very well, aren't you, Crispin? He's a scrimch anchor. We'll keep him here for one more night just to be on the safe side. Say good morning to Mrs. Pilot Jones, Crispin. Good morning, Mrs. Pilot Jones. Hello, Crispin. I'll be in my office if you want a word later. Thank you, matron. All right, if I sit here. I brought you some books. Talk of the Otter. All right. Thank you. Mr. Hearth told me about your accident. You had a lucky escape. Anyway, you're all right now. Yes. I expect you're wondering whether Mr. Hearth told me about that business with the shop, aren't you? Well, he did. That's one reason why I came. I used to steal things from shops when I was a bit younger than you. Did you? Hmm. Had quite a phase of it. Luckily for me, the shopkeeper didn't tell the school or I think I'd have been expelled so as not to contaminate the other young ladies. I'm trusting you to keep that a secret, mind. You're the only person here who knows it, all right? Yes. I often wondered why I did it. My parents were pretty well off. I didn't need the things. It was as if everything I had came from my parents or from the school. I thought if I got something myself, it'd be really mine. My pen, my handkerchief, do you know? I didn't use the things or anything. Just used to hide them. Stupid, wasn't it? Why did you stop? Oh, the shopkeeper caught me. I got frightened. When I got over that, there didn't seem to be any point in it. Have you stopped, do you think? Yes. Why? Because there isn't any point in it. Did you hide the things too? No. Gave them away to people. To make them like you? And they didn't like you? No, they took the things, but didn't change anything. They just laughed at me. It's what they always do. No use at anything. You mean you're no use at rugby or cricket or singing, don't you? They're not the only things in the world, despite what you hear at Bamfield. Do you know, I wouldn't be much use here either. Listen, can you think of anything, anything at all, that you can do better than the next chap? Nothing at all? 
No hobbies? There must be something. I could play the handbells. Handbells? You know those little... Yes, I, I know what they are. Have you got a set? Yes, in the box one. You never had them out? No, people laugh at me, enough as it is. There's nothing funny about handbells. You might not think so. I think they'd be just the thing for the Christmas concert. You could play carols and amaze everyone with your brilliance. No? No, you can't play handbells on your own. Got to have a team and practice and everything. Wouldn't be any good. Thank you for trying, Mrs. Pilot Jones. Bennington. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Close the door, Bennington. <laughs> oh. 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 Well, that was nice. Yeah, but not too much mess, either. <laughs> Come here. then well i just wanted to say thank you for a wonderful year you've made all the difference have i i don't feel as if i've done anything at all yes, you have i only hope it's enough for you do you miss politics no it's strange i had a letter from the executive this morning i could hardly be bothered to read it i ought to feel ashamed but i don't <laughs> Oh, he enjoyed himself tonight, didn't he? Who? Crispin. Oh, yes. Yes, he did. I think he's come through it, whatever it was. <laughs> Handbells, isn't that extraordinary? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't look so solemn. Sorry? This time next year, there'll be three of us. Well, horrible day. When's that uh, interview of yours? <coughs> A fortnight. Hmm. Let's see, what could the uh, examiners think up in two weeks? Which is your weakest paper, do you think? I think... Uh, oh. Oh, come Sorry. in. Sorry. Join the Brains Trust. Uh, no, it's all right. I, I'm off out for a walk. I thought you might be free to come with me. In this weather? I won't go far. All right. Now, I have a feeling that Anglo-Saxon Chronicles might come up. You may well spend that on you. You do well to give it a bit of extra study. Books about it somewhere. Alfred's writing his own propaganda here. I mean, these are beg... All right, Benson. Chris? 
Is that you, Chris? Chris? Sorry, Don't try and move. Can I do anything, sir? Yes. Ring Dr. Parrington. Tell him it's urgent. Try to relax. I I'm going to carry you upstairs. Oh. Ah. Oh. Do you want any help? Yes, come here. Oh. Come around the other side. Yes, of course. Ah. Sorry. She's going to be all right, PJ. I'm afraid she's lost the baby, a boy. There's nothing I could do. Had she had a fall or anything? She, she'd just been for a walk. Chance in a thousand, absolutely no reason why anything should have gone wrong. I'm very sorry, PJ. But what about her? The baby meant everything to her. She's asleep now. She's very weak and exhausted. But she knows what's happened and she's taking it quietly. I expect the reaction will come later. I'll call in again tomorrow. There's nothing much more I can do here now. Physically, she's much the same as she would have been if she were recovering from a normal birth. Except there's no baby. How she copes these next few days or weeks, well, I'm afraid that's uh, rather up to you. We could go down the Seine by boat, if you like. We've never done that. Yes, lovely. Or we could go to Provence, uh, try to rent a cottage. Yes, all right, if you like. Well, Chris, you've got to try and snap out of it. You have. Not for me, more for you. Dr. Farrington says there's no reason why you shouldn't have another child. It's not you, Chris. How long did it take you to snap out of it? Well, it's not the same for a man, I realize that. I mean, when you lost Beth. Yes, sir. Hell of a long time. But this place helped. It can't help me, David. Chris, it can if you let it. I've um, invited Algie Harris over to take even song. I've half promised to be there. Say if you'd rather I didn't go. I, they can manage perfectly well without me. No, you go on. You must be fed up hanging around me. Oh, Chris, it's not that. You know it. Oh, I know. I'll be all right. You go on. Will you go straight to bed, or would you like some company? Shall I ask Matron to come and sit with you? No, God, no. David, I said I'll be all right. Go on now, really. The story I'm going to tell you now happened a very long time ago when I was a very young teacher at Bamfield School. And Bamfield... Now, 
how this story began in a very peculiar way. Ah, he said, Fortescue is it not? If you see that young fool Harry's, will you remind him that gowns are not to be worn on second landing? <laughs> Absolutely splendid, Alger. Never seen you more better form. No, no. Mere seeing eye ramblings, my dear chap, but still, thank you, just the same. No, I only won't mind if you stay for a drink. Oh, no. Well, Christine's in bed, so we'll have to keep it a bit quiet. Uh, sorry to butt in, PJ. One of the boys says he saw Chrissy's car drive out of the school about ten minutes ago. I'd better go and check. Here. I'll take Molyneux's motorbike and go after her. She can't have gone far. David, anything we can do? Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like one of you to stay here, if you would, in case she comes back, or in case anyone phones. We're both stay. Thanks. Chris. Oh, where is this place? What's happened? You all right? Are you hurt? No. Oh, I drove off by myself. Why did you? Why did you go off? You must have known I'd have been scared out of my wits. I shouldn't have left you. It wasn't your fault. Just wanted to drive, you know. I got tired, I wanted to go to sleep. Go on sleeping, not wake up like Crispin. So quiet up here, isn't it? No bells. Come on, Chris, I'll take you back. No, I'm not going back there, not yet. Chris, we'll have another child, I promise you. Not that. That just made it worse. Made what worse? Feels so bloody useless. Got no purpose, have I? Isn't being my wife purpose enough? No, it isn't. You enjoy yourself being headmaster so much, don't you? Going off to little meetings, coaching your star scholarship pupils. And then you remember and you think, oh, I better 
spend half an hour cheering up poor old Chris. This bloody patient comes over your face when you ask me what sort of day I've had. You've been so patient. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have tried. Why wouldn't you tell me? I couldn't tell you. Not down there. Please. Please, listen to me. I, I should have been able to see how, how you were feeling. But because I've been so happy this last year or so. I thought I'd made you happy too. I... I love you so much, Chris. I... I don't think I can live without you now. David, what are we going to do? into politics, I suppose. No, she won't have it. I do, in fact, have a suggestion, PJ. Go on. Well, with all due respect, it's always seemed to me that the new prep department hasn't got as far as it should have done. It's ticking over. It should be burgeoning. Yes, perhaps, Hyth, but I haven't got time to think about that. I think perhaps you should. You've never really had the time to give it. What it needs is someone young, energetic, imaginative, with full responsibility for the syllabus and the recruiting, as well as a good deal of the teaching. If only she'd do it. I think she might. If I might offer a tiny piece of advice... Please do. Wait a day or two before broaching it with her. Work out exactly what sort of thing you're offering and anticipate her objections. You're still inclined to go off at half cock now and then, aren't you? Endearingly Welsh, of course, but less than wholly convenient for the rest of us. Yes. Yes, I'll try it. When did you think of it? Ah. Oh, dear. I was afraid you were going to ask me that. I, uh, didn't think of it. He did. Morning, boys. Morning, Sister James. Sit down. Well, you all look as nervous as I feel. It's really not going to be as bad as you think it is. We're very lucky to be at Bamfield, and we're going to enjoy life here. Now, the first thing I want you to do is write me an essay entitled Myself, because I want to find out all about you. Right, then off you go. Dear David, I'm sure you'll think I'm just as scatty as I ever was sending my son across the Atlantic to you when there seems to be trouble stirring up in Europe. But I can't think of a better place for Charles to continue his education or a better man to look after him. Anything interesting, David? Yes. yes. You're about to get Come our first American food. Woo! Bamfield's reputation spread worldwide, has it? No, not really. He's the son of an old friend of mine, uh, Julia Derbyshire. Well, uh, Julia Sprockman. She married a rich yanker, went to live in America. Oh, I see. I thought about her in years. Are you sure she's an old friend, not an old flame? Well, 
a bit of both, actually. <laughs> Bully for you. There is a particular reason, too, why I'm sending him over now. But if things work out right, I'll never need to tell you what it is. He's very American, of course, but somehow I know you'll take to each other. Not quite what you're used to in America, I should think. It's a very old school. I think it's swell, sir. And do you think you're going to like it here, Charles? I guess I will, sir. Mom talked about this place so much. Well, I'm afraid that in one or two subjects, we're going to have to start you off with the younger boys. But in others, you'll have quite a lot to teach us. Captain of the junior debating team, I hear. Yes, sir. We won the state trophy. Your mother was never at a loss for words, either. No, sir. I guess I get that from her. Well, you can expect a bit of ribbing at first about accents and so on. But I have a feeling that that won't bother you too much. No, sir. I reckon I can give as good as I get. I'm sure you can. Well, come along. Let's see about settling you into your new house and meeting some of your new friends, eh? Good of you to come, PJ. This place must have some less than happy associations. That's true. Can't say I find it altogether congenial myself. Point of fact, I loathe the place. How's Christine, the baby? Oh, fine. We've called him Ian after you. Chris can't wait to get back to work. If I know her, she'll be back in the classroom in a couple of months. I almost envy her, you know. Yes, well, I, I dare say you'll be out of here and back with us before too long. My dear chap, don't let us pretend to each other. You know I'm dying, and so do I. Quack seems to feel it's none of my business. Ghost young fellow. I was forced to be rather severe with him. Three months, he thinks. If there's going to be a war, I won't be here to see it, thank God. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not. I think I've had quite enough. I do, however, I have one favor to ask. Anything you like. Wait till you hear it, impetuous fellow. I have a, a sentimental notion that I'd like to discharge myself from hospital and die at Bamfield. Only place I feel comfortable. You must tell me if you find that too. Macabre? No, of course you must. But will you be able to manage? Oh, I'll engage a nurse if it should prove necessary. Money, as you know, is no problem for me. I should like to die at Bamfield, David. I don't know what you mean, Caesar. Now, kill him. I thought you were my friend, Brutus. All right, fine. Very good concentration, all of you. Now, just have a word with the person next to you. Any ideas about what might happen next, all right? like it? I'm very impressed. But what is it? David, you are slow. It's Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar at ten years old? Not the actual play, of course. I tell them the plot. They interpret it in their own way. Then when they come to read it, it'll mean something to them. 
hope you're finding time to bring up our son in between classes. He's very happy with Mrs. Clark. You know, she adores him. We have to fight to get a look in sometimes. Mm. Don't worry, David. Ian's very important to me. So is my work. And you certainly impressed that LCC man. They're going to take up six more places next year, and they've agreed to pay board and tuition. That's marvellous. We're going to fill my school with cockneys. Bright boys with family problems. That's not unusual for Bamfield. And they will be bright. They'll be there in your scholarship class in a few years' time. I look forward to it. All right. We must have some good ideas by now. Excuse me. Not too hot for you? By no means. In my next incarnation, I plan to be a lizard and bask on a rock. I seem to have spent several lifetimes in cold classrooms and drafty corridors. How does it feel to be a famous success? I'm not a famous success. The Times Educational Supplement describes your work in glowing terms. The very summit, I should have thought, of pedagogic glory. I thought so. I thought so. You mustn't eclipse your husband. Little danger of that. No, I think not. Look, I must go. I've got some new parents coming. I'll come back and collect you. You must come for tea, all right? Oh, that would be delightful. Have you everything you want? Indeed I have. Indeed I have. Cricket is such a magnificently boring game. it might. I was in here just over a year ago for cancer and they thought they'd caught it in time, but they were wrong. I've arranged with my attorney to notify you as soon as it happens and I'm afraid that you will be saddled with the job of telling Charles. a long debate with myself about whether to tell you this. You seem to have made another happy marriage after all and you don't owe Charles anything in the material sense. But the truth is, of course, he's your son. Hi. In the final instance, I leave it to you whether to tell your wife or not. But I think the best thing would be perhaps to leave it right where it is and just, well, keep a fatherly eye on him. That's about it, except to say goodbye and good luck, always. I loved you both.
Once again, on Founders' Day, I should like to welcome a lot of new faces, as well as those of you who have made a very special effort to be with us every year. It is, naturally, a very difficult time for us all, and so I'm especially grateful that you could be with us today. I also notice that some of our old boys have discarded their school uniforms in favor of a different type of uniform. <laughs> when I first entered the school grounds during the last war, I also wore such a uniform. We thought that was the war to end all wars. And now, it is a matter of great grief and of great pride that in the last few months, Bamfield men have again given their lives. One such man, R.A.L. Dobson, who was here between 1914 and 1920, was last week killed in action in France. He was one of the very first boys I ever taught. Let us remember his courage as we pray for courage and for wisdom. Well, it's a cruel world. It changes us all. You haven't met Chad Boyer, have you, Chris? This is my wife. Glad to meet you now. How Hello, do you do, Chad. Mrs. Powell Jones? This chap was in the very first lesson I taught. God, I hope you've forgotten that. Oh, no. Etched on my memory. One doesn't forget an occasion like that. I'm sure he was very well behaved. No, he wasn't. He was appalling. He faked an epileptic fit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? My whole career hung in the balance for five minutes. Oh, Didn't you know? He had me taped from the very first moment. I knew it was a mistake as soon as I started. <laughs> I was meaning to ask you. Yes? Do you think I might make any sort of shot of teaching when this is over? Really? I've thought it over quite a bit, sir. Yes. Yes, I think you might do very well. Look, why don't you come along and have a drink and a chat with us later on? Right. See you later, then. Yes. Mrs. Parlour Jones? Right, Chad. <laughs> he called you sir. He can't be that much younger than you. He wants to come back here and teach, Chris. That makes me feel very good. If he does come back... Yes. It would be naive to suppose that this war will be any easier than the last. But this one's right, isn't it? I mean, we know what we're fighting for. And we will win, won't we? Yes. And this place will carry on. You know, sometimes it's quite extraordinary. It's more than 20 years since I first came here. You'll hardly recognize me. I'm as skinny as a rake, shell-shocked, and the shakes, hardly able to hold myself together. If anyone had said then, I'd still be here 20 years later. You are here. You happy? Would you change it? No. No, I wouldn't change it.
This time next year, there'll be three of us. Well, horrible day. When's that uh, interview of yours? <coughs> A fortnight. Hmm. Let's see, what could the uh, examiners think up in two weeks? Which is your weakest paper, do you think? I think... Uh, oh. Oh, come Sorry. in. Sorry. Join the Brains Trust. No, it's all right. I, I'm off out for a walk. I thought you might be free to come with me. In this weather? I won't go far. Oh, all right. Now, I have a feeling that Anglo-Saxon Chronicles might come up. May well spend that on you. You do well to give it a bit of extra study. Books about it somewhere. Alfred's writing his own propaganda here. I mean, these are beggars. All right, Benson. Chris? Is that you, Chris? Chris? Oh, God, it hurts. Oh, sorry, Jim. Don't try and move. Can I do anything, sir? Yes. Ring Dr. Parrington. Tell him it's urgent. Try to relax. I'm going to carry you upstairs. Oh. 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 Do you want any help? Yes, come here. Oh. Come on the other side. Yes, of course. Oh. Sorry. She's going to be all right, PJ. I'm afraid she's lost the baby, a boy. There's nothing I could do. Had she had a fall or anything? She, she'd just been for a walk. Chance in a thousand, absolutely no reason why anything should have gone wrong. I'm very sorry, PJ. But what about her? The baby meant everything, then. A boy. There's nothing I could do. Had she had a fall or anything? She... She'd just been for a walk. Chance in a thousand, absolutely no reason why anything should have gone wrong. I'm very sorry, PJ. But what about her? The baby meant everything to her. She's asleep now. She's very weak and exhausted. But she knows what's happened and she's taking it quietly. I expect the reaction will come later. I'll call him again tomorrow. There's nothing much more I can do here now. Physically, she's much the same as she would have been if she were recovering from a normal birth. Except there's no baby. How she copes these next few days or weeks, well, I'm afraid that's uh, rather up to you. We could go down the Seine by boat, if you like. We've never done that. Yes, lovely. We could go to Provence, uh, try to rent a cottage. Yes, all right, if you like. Well, Chris, you've got to try and snap out of it. You have. Not for me, more for you. Dr. Farrington says there's no reason why you shouldn't have another child. It's not you, Chris. How long did it take you to snap out of it? Well, 
It's not the same for a man, I realize that. I mean when you lost Beth. Yes, sir. Hell of a long time. But this place helped. It can't help me, David. Chris, it can if you let it. That'll be the end of prep. I've, um, invited Algie Harris over to take even song. I've half promised to be there. Say if you'd rather I didn't go. I, they can manage perfectly well without me. No, you go on. You must be fed up hanging around me. Oh, Chris, it's not that. You know it. Oh, I know. I'll be all right. You go on. I had the mud. No, people laugh at me enough as it is. There's nothing funny about handbells. You might not think so. I think they'd be just the thing for the Christmas concert. You could play carols and amaze everyone with your brilliance. No? No, you can't play handbells on your own. Got to have a team and practice and everything. Wouldn't be any good. Thank you for trying, Mrs. Pilot Jones. wanted to say thank you for a wonderful year. You've made all the difference. Have I? I don't feel as if I've done anything at all. Yes, you have. I only hope it's enough for you. Do you miss politics? No, it's strange. I had a letter from the executive this morning. I could hardly be bothered to read it. I ought to feel ashamed, but I don't. <laughs> Why wouldn't you tell me? I couldn't tell you. Not down there. Please. Please, listen to me. I, I should have been able to see how, how you were feeling. But because I've been so happy this last year or so, I thought I'd made you happy too. I, I love you so much, Chris. I, I don't think I can live without you now. David, what are we going to do?
Well, where do we go from here? Back into politics, I suppose. No, she won't have it. I do, in fact, have a suggestion, PJ. Go on. Well, with all due respect, it's always seemed to me that the new prep department hasn't got as far as it should have done. It's ticking over. It should be burgeoning. Yes, perhaps, Hath, but I haven't got time to think about that. I think perhaps you should. You've never really had the time to give it. What it needs is someone young, energetic, imaginative, with full responsibility for the syllabus and the recruiting, as well as a good deal of the teaching. If only she'd do it. I think she might. If I might offer a tiny piece of advice... Please do. Wait a day or two before broaching it with her. Work out exactly what sort of thing you're offering and anticipate her objections. You're still inclined to go off at half cock now and then, aren't you? Endearingly Welsh, of course, but less than wholly convenient for the rest of us. Yes. Yes, I'll try it. When did you think of it? Ah. Oh, dear. I was afraid you were going to ask me that. I, uh, didn't think of it. He did. Morning, boys. Good morning, sister. For us to surpass our magnificent efforts of last year. But I am sure that we will all surprise ourselves again. Thank you. School. Two negatives in English destroy one another, or are equivalent to an approach. As one might say, nor were they unacquainted with real and Shopkeeper caught him red-handed. I um, took the liberty of compensating him and smoothing him down. I don't think he really wanted to make trouble. It's the boy I'm concerned about. Crispy never struck me as being the criminal type. Oh, well, we couldn't get a word of explanation out of him. Would you like me to talk to him? Oh, no, DJ. I'll keep an eye on him. I felt you ought to know. to you, Mrs. Pallet Jones. You are looking remarkably well. Chris, you promised to call me Chris. Oh, my apologies. I do try, I assure you. I think it must be the awe I experience before my headmaster that prevents me. You must try to be patient. David, the Gilbert and Sullivan. I was wondering, could I help? Oh, yes, of course, Chris. I didn't like to ask. There's masses of work to be done with the costumes and makeup. Costumes and makeup, David, you know I can hardly sew on a button. Couldn't I help with the production or the stage management? Uh, well, I'm afraid that's a bit politically difficult. You see, um, old Algie Harris likes to be asked over to do that, and the brunt of the work falls on to Molyneux. And between them both, they've become a bit possessive about it. Oh, well, it was, it was just a passing fancy. I could do them a party for the first night. Yes, yeah, splendid, good idea. Fine. Well, I won't keep you then. I've got some shopping in the village. Oh, uh, Chris. Yes? I was going to ask if I might call round for a chat one morning. A little problem I think you might be able to help me with. Yes, of course. I'm free tomorrow at 11. Fine. I'll look forward to it. Thank you. Uh. <laughs> oh. 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 That was nice. Uh, not 
too much mess, are huh? there? <laughs> Come here. Mm. Oh. oh, hey, what's all this then? Well, I just wanted to say thank you for a wonderful year. You've made all the difference. Have I? I don't feel as if I've done anything at all. Yes, you have. I only hope it's enough for you. Do you miss politics? No, it's strange. I had a letter from the executive this morning. I could hardly be bothered to read it. I ought to feel ashamed, but I don't. <sighs> he enjoyed himself tonight, didn't he? Who? Crispin. Oh, yes. Yes, he did. I think he's come through it, whatever it was. <laughs> Handbells, isn't that extraordinary? <laughs> hey, you don't look so solemn. Sorry? This time next year, there'll be three of us. Well, horrible day. When's that uh, interview of yours? <coughs> A fortnight. Hmm. Let's see, what could the uh, examiners think up in two weeks? Which is your weakest paper, do you think? I think... Uh, oh. Oh, come I'm in. Sorry. Join the Brains Trust. Uh, no, it's all right. I, I'm off out for a walk. I thought you might be free to come with me. In this weather? I won't go far. Oh, all right. Now, I have a feeling that Anglo-Saxon chronicles might come up. You may well spend that on you. You do well to give it a bit of extra study. Books about it somewhere. Alfred's writing his own propaganda here. I mean, these are beg- All right, Benson. Chris? Is that you, Chris? Chris? Oh, God, it hurts. Oh, sorry, Dave. Don't try and move. Can I do anything, sir? Yes. Ring Dr. Parrington. Tell him it's urgent. She's not here. I'll take Molyneux's motorbike and go after her. She can't have gone far. David, anything we can do? Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like one of you to stay here, if you would, in case she comes back, or in case anyone phones. We're both stay. Thanks.
Chris. Chris. Oh, where is this place? What's happened? You all right? Are you hurt? No. Oh, I drove off by myself. Why did you? Why did you go off? You must have known I'd have been scared out of my wits. I shouldn't have left you. It wasn't your fault. Just wanted to drive, you know. And I got tired. I wanted to go to sleep. Go on sleeping, not wake up like Crispin. So quiet up here, isn't it? No bells. Come on, Chris, and take a bath. But this place helped. It can't help me, David. Chris, it can if you let it. That'll be the end of prep. I've um, invited Algie Harris over to take even song. I've half promised to be there. Say if you'd rather I didn't go. They can manage perfectly well without me. No, you go on. You must be fed up hanging around me. Oh, Chris, it's not that. You know it. Oh, I know. I'll be all right. You go on. Will you go straight to bed? Or would you like some company? Shall I ask Matron to come and sit with you? No, God, no. David, I said I'll be all right. Go on now, really. The story I'm going to tell you now happened a very long time ago when I was a very young teacher at Bamfield School. And Bamfield... Now, this story began in a very peculiar way. Ah, he said, Fortescue is it not? If you see that young fool, Harry's, will you remind him that gowns are not to be worn on second landing? <laughs> Absolutely splendid, Algie. I've never seen you more better form. Oh, no, no. Yes, seeing I ramblings, my dear chap, but still, thank you, just the same. No, I only won't mind if you stay for a drink. Oh, no. Well, Christine's in bed, so we'll have to keep him a bit quiet. Uh, sorry to butt in, TJ. One of the boys says he saw Chrissy's car drive out of the school about ten minutes ago. I'd better go and check. I've never really had the time to give it. What it needs is someone young, energetic, imaginative, with full responsibility for the syllabus and the recruiting, as well as a good deal of the teaching. If only she'd do it. I think she might. If I might offer a tiny piece of advice. Please do. Wait a day or two before broaching it with her. Work out exactly what sort of thing you're offering and anticipate her objections. You're still inclined to go off at half cock now and then, aren't you? Endearingly Welsh, of course, but less than wholly convenient for the rest of us. Yes. Yes, I'll try it. When did you think of it? Ah. Oh, dear. I was afraid you were going to ask me that. I, uh, didn't think of it. He did. Oh, 
morning, boys. Good morning, Sister James. Sit down. Well, you all look as nervous as I feel. It's really not going to be as bad as you think it is. We're very lucky to be at Bamfield, and we're going to enjoy life here. Now, the first thing I want you to do is write me an essay entitled Myself, because I want to find out all about you. Right, then off you go. My dear David, I'm sure you'll think I'm just as scatty as I ever was sending my son across the Atlantic to you when there seems to be trouble stirring up in Europe. But I can't think of a better place for Charles to continue his education or a better man to look after him. Anything interesting, David? Yes. yes. You're about to get Come to our first on. American food. Oh. Bamfield's reputation spread worldwide, has it? No, not really. He's the son of an old friend of mine, uh, Julia Derbyshire. Well, uh, Julia Sprockman. She married a rich yanker, went to live in America. Oh, I see. I thought about her in years. Are you sure she's an old friend, not an old flame? Well, a bit of both, actually. <laughs> Bully for you. There is a particular reason, too, why I'm sending him over now. But if they... Look, I must go. I've got some new parents coming. I'll come back and collect you. You must come for tea, all right? Oh, that would be delightful. Have you everything you want? Indeed, I have. Indeed, I have. Cricket is such a magnificently boring game. Well, David, it happened the way I thought it might. I was in here just over a year ago for cancer, and they thought they'd caught it in time. But they were wrong. I've arranged with my attorney to notify you as soon as it happens, and I'm afraid that you'll be saddled with the job of telling Charles. a long debate with myself about whether to tell you this. You seem to have made another happy marriage after all, and you don't owe Charles anything in the material sense. But the truth is, of course, he's your son. Hi. In the final instance, I leave it to you whether to tell your wife or not. But I think the best thing would be perhaps to leave it right where it is and just, well, keep a fatherly eye on him. That's about it, except to say goodbye and good luck, always. I loved you both. I, I know what they are. Have you got a set? Yes, in the box room. You never had them out? No, people laugh at me, enough as it is. There's nothing funny about handbells. 
You might not think so. I think they'd be just the thing for the Christmas concert. You could play carols and amaze everyone with your brilliance. No? No, you can't play handbells on your own. Got to have a team and practice and everything. Wouldn't be any good. Thank you for trying, Mrs. Pilot Jones. Bennington. Bennington. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Close the door, Bennington. <laughs> oh. 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 Well, that was nice. Yeah, but not too much mess, either. <laughs> Come here. then? Well, I just wanted to say thank you for a wonderful year. You've made all the difference. Have I? I don't feel as if I've done anything at all. Yes, you have. I only hope it's enough for you. Do you miss politics? No, it's strange. I had a letter from the executive this morning. I could hardly be bothered to read it. Oh. Where is this place? What's happened? You all right? Are you hurt? No. Oh, I drove off by myself. Why did you... Why did you go off? You must have known I'd have been scared out of my wits. I shouldn't have left you. It wasn't your fault. Just wanted to drive, you know. And I got tired. I wanted to go to sleep. Go on sleeping, not wake up like Crispin. So quiet up here, isn't it? No bells. Come on, Chris, I'll take you back. No, I'm not going back there, not yet. Chris, we'll have another child, I promise you. Not that. That just made it worse. Made what worse? Feels so bloody useless. No purpose, have I? Isn't being my wife purpose enough? No, it isn't. You enjoy yourself being headmaster so much, don't you? Going over to little meetings, coaching your star scholarship pupils. And then you remember and you think, oh, I better spend half an hour cheering up poor old Chris. This bloody patient comes over your face when you ask me what sort of day I've had. You've been so patient. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have tried. Why wouldn't you tell me? I couldn't tell you. Not down there. 
Please. Please, listen to me. I'm... I should have been able to see how, how you were feeling. But because I've been so happy this last year or so, I thought I'd made you happy too. I... I love you so much, because I... I don't think I can live without you now. Take it. What are we going to do?